What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with camera tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Power 5G 2023. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of the various cameras on your device. Now the first thing I want to do is go over all the various cameras that we're actually getting here with the phone as there are several of them. Now starting off with the front facing camera, that is 16 megapixels. Then on the back of the phone, we have a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a two megapixel depth sensing camera to assist with portrait mode, and a two megapixel macro camera for close up images. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that video recording with this phone does max out at 1080p for both the front and rear cameras. Now here's how things look on the camera app on the device. This is with the main rear camera right now. Then from here, you can go over to this button to access the macro camera. And then with macro, you can get very close up and have things be in really good detail. So that's certainly a nice feature to have. Then from there, you can go over to portrait mode to get those nice blurred out backgrounds. And then you can tap on this button in the bottom right corner to access the blur slider. So if you want more blur, you can do that. Or if you want less blur, you have that option as well. Then from here, to get to the front facing camera, tap on this button on the left of the shutter button and it'll flip things around. So there's me right there. So you can take portrait selfies, as you can see. You can also crop out a little bit to take a group selfie, which is pretty cool. And you can even adjust the blur for the front facing camera as well when you're in portrait mode. Now, in addition to that, you can take standard selfies as well. So if you don't want portrait mode for your selfies, that's no problem. Just go to the standard photo mode, and then you can also use the group selfie option for the standard front facing mode as well. Now you can see that the button that typically would be for the blur slider has now been changed. So if you go to this button now in the regular photo mode, you can see here that we actually get a bunch of different filters that can be applied. So I definitely recommend trying out these various filters to see if you like any of them. And then back on the main camera, you can see that you can also access the filters here as well. Now in the bottom left corner, we have this button, which is a quick access to Google Lens. Now if you've never used Google Lens, it's actually a pretty cool feature because you can essentially take a photo of an object and search for that object. So I'm gonna search for this plant, and you can see it's looking up results, and it actually found some plants that are similar to this one here in the search results. Now moving on from there, you can see that we have a lot of different options down here at the bottom. So on the far left, we have Pro Mode, which for Pro Mode, you can make various adjustments, such as the white balance, ISO, and more. So if you are a more advanced photographer, I definitely recommend giving that a try. You can also see up top here, we have an option that says JPEG or JPG. And if you go there, you can actually switch to taking raw photos instead. Or you can also do raw plus JPEG. So a lot of different options there related to the type of photo you want to take. Then heading over to video mode, you can see that you can take video with both a standard camera and then also you can take macro videos, which is something that you can't find too often, even with phones that actually have macro cameras. And then heading further down on this bottom slider, we have an option for night vision. So as the name does suggest, you can take great looking photos at night here with the phone. So definitely make sure to head over to this if it seems like it's pretty dark outside. Then we also have more. So in the more section, we have additional options. So we have spot color, which is pretty cool. With that, you basically pick a color. So I'm gonna pick green and you can see that it makes everything else grayscale. And then you can also adjust the color intensity slider down here at the bottom. Heading back over to that more section, we have panorama, which is pretty self-explanatory. You can capture panorama photos. There's also ultra res. So despite this phone having a 50 megapixel camera, it doesn't actually take photos at 50 megapixels by default. But if you want to, you can go to ultra res and you can capture photos in that 50 megapixel format. So when you do that, the photos will be top-notch quality. And the reason why 50 megapixel photos are not the default here is just because it would take up a lot of space in your phone and most people don't actually need photos that are this crisp and clear. But certainly something that I recommend enabling if you think it's necessary for you. Now dual capture is pretty cool. With dual capture, you can basically capture videos or photos with both the front and rear cameras at the same time. And you can switch for which one you want to be the larger one of the two. So I also appreciate that you can move around the camera as well. So if you don't want everything to be in this default format, 
You can put the secondary camera in the upper left or bottom left or in the center or wherever you want it to be. So that's a nice feature. We also have dual capture video down here, slow motion, time lapse, and then spot color for videos as well. So I do appreciate that despite this being a more affordable, lower end phone, we're getting a lot of different features in the camera app. Now, with this bottom slider down here, you can further customize this. So when you're in the More tab, you'll see this little pen in the bottom right corner. If you go there, you can actually remove certain ones here. You can't remove photo or video, unfortunately, but you can remove Pro Mode, for example. Maybe you're never using that. And then you can take another option here and put it there instead. So maybe you're constantly taking ultra-res photos or you're doing dual capture. You can take those two and drop them down below. So I'm gonna do that, go to Done, and then now you'll see they're down here in the bottom slider. So you have very easy access to these different options. Now moving on, you can see we have some options up top here, but if you swipe down, it'll actually further expand that. So you can see some of the different ones here. There's auto night vision, there's active photos. So active photos is not enabled by default, but that's very similar to iOS's live photos. There's also HDR, which is set to auto by default. We also have options for the aspect ratio. So three by four is the default. You can also switch to one by one, which is square. Swiping back down here, you can see there's nine by 16 or 16 by nine. That's ideal to capture a thumbnail image. And then there's also the full aspect ratio. So this takes up the entire display here of the phone. So you get one giant camera. But basically when taking photos or videos in this mode, they'll either be very tall or very wide. We also have an option for a timer. So three seconds or 10 seconds, and then the flash. So you can have the flash on auto or have it be always on anytime you're taking a photo, or you can have it completely off at all times. Now heading over to video mode, we have some similar options here, but when we swipe down, you'll see that there are some different ones here as well. So the first one is frame rate. Now this applies more to the rear camera, but you can see we have an option for 30 or 60 FPS. Also for the aspect ratio, you can do nine by 16 or 16 by nine, or the full aspect ratio of the phone. You can also turn the mic on or off. You can turn stabilization off if you want to. However, I don't really know why you would. And then also there's an option for the torch to be always on. So you can have the flashlight here on at all times when capturing a video, which could come in handy in certain situations. And even in video mode for the front facing camera, you can see there's an option for the torch to be always on, but basically it'll just light up all the other areas outside of the actual selfie area itself. There's also an option for face beauty. It kind of smooths out your face. So I personally don't care for that, but that is an option. Now moving on from here, you can go over to this gear icon in the upper right corner, and that'll take you to a lot more settings related to photo and video capture. So the first one here is AI settings. So there's some already enabled by default, but some of them are not. So the first one is auto smile capture. So automatically capture when everyone in the frame is smiling. So I'm gonna try this with myself here. There we go, I was smiling and took the photo, and now that I'm not smiling, it's not taking a photo. Let me try that again. There we go, so that's pretty cool. We also have gesture selfie, so show your palm to take a selfie. Now it's kind of hard to do this with the camera in front of me, but let me try this right now. And now it took the selfie. And then there's also smart composition, so automatically level and implement the rule of thirds. Now moving on here to some photo settings. We have front photo resolution, so from there, you can have it be either standard or high resolution. So if you are taking a lot of selfies, and if that's really important to you to have the best quality possible, you might wanna make this adjustment here. But you can see it does recommend the standard resolution so you don't fill up too much space on the phone. We also have an option for selfie photo mirror. So that's good that it's already enabled by default. Basically, you don't want everything to be backwards in your selfies. There's also an option for the watermark. So going there, you can add a timestamp in the corner, kind of similar to those old school film cameras. And then you can add a watermark with the Motorola logo showing what phone took the photo, which is the G Power 5G 2023. And you can even add a signature with your name potentially. So I'm gonna type in Kevin Breeze. And there you go, you can see there's the preview right there, but essentially it'll have my name in the corner of the photo at all times. Now moving into the videos option, there's just an option here to take more efficient videos in the HEVC format. I don't necessarily recommend doing that unless you just are always taking videos and you're really concerned about your phone storage being taken up, but it is there at least, which is nice. There's also capture settings. So these are pretty cool. So there's quick capture, which I showed in a previous video, but twist your wrist twice quickly to open the rear camera. So let's try that. There we go, it pulled up the camera right away. We also have tap anywhere to capture. 
So it's pretty self-explanatory, but you can tap anywhere and it'll capture the photo or start recording the video. Now by default with this device, it does create a shutter sound when tapping on the shutter button, as you can see right there. Now if you don't want that sound, if you want the phone's camera to be completely silent, you can disable that. We also have an assistive grid, so I'll enable that, and then also a leveler. So with the assistive grid, it's going to give us a grid here for the rule of thirds, and then you can see there's also a level as well to make sure that the photos are completely level. And then there's also an option here for keep last mode, so it will open the camera with the last used mode active. So if you do have the camera in a certain mode and you're tired of it going back to the default every time you open it, you can make that change right there. And then finally, we also have an ability to save the location of the photo when you're taking the photo itself. So that's here in the save settings. Now I've saved the best feature for last, but that's basically to give the phone the ability to double press in the power button to open up the camera app. So let me show you how to set this up. So you're gonna pull down the shade here, go to the settings for the phone, go to search, type in double, and you'll see right there, double press power key. So go there, then go here, and you can see right now it's set to none, but you can switch it to launch camera. And then now, if you double press in the power key, it'll pull up the camera app. So that's really convenient. But this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Power 5G 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.